Hi everyone, this is a video of a switch uh, that I created for my laser engraver. It allows me to swap between rotary and normal functionality of the laser engraver. The rotary attachment, normally you have to disconnect something from the Y port and then connect your rotary up to the Y port. This allows everything to stay connected at all times and you to be able to swap between a rotary and normal functionality of the laser engraver. So the switch box can be built to suit your needs. Uh, I used XH 2.54 millimeter um, socket connectors, three of them on my uh, project box here, and a four pole dual throw switch uh, to be able to connect the switch box up to all three of my laser engravers. And it works great for all of them uh, using light burn. So here I'm showing the insides of the project box. I've got the three of the XH 2.54 millimeter socket connectors uh, mounted into the box and uh, soldered wires onto the pins of those and then attached the wires up to the four pole dual throw switch, which uh, has screws so it's easy to, easy to attach the wires to that. Each of the socket connectors is set up on a row or a column of those screws uh, from your viewpoint there. As you can see, you gotta make sure you get all the wires, you know, blacks all in a, you know, in a row, all the greens in a row, blues in a row, reds in a row. And then on the connectors themselves, I've got with the keyway uh, on the up position, I've got red, blue, green, black there. All three connectors, I have the same situation there. Um, have them wired or soldered up the exact same way. <clears throat> so with the keyway uh, on the up or facing upwards from the bottom of the box uh, that I'm pointing at here, uh, whatever cable you've got attached to it, um, basically I just, this stepper cable, I just followed the color scheme of the stepper cable with the keyway up with the red um, the red, blue, green, black, and then and then they copy over to the socket connectors. These are the XH 2.54 socket connectors that I used. Um, I needed three of them for the project box. And basically I uh, drilled a couple of holes, used some files and, and sanded a, or filed a, a rectangle. Uh, it's got a tight fit, so I was able to slip them in and they, they fit tightly and then on the inside, I just kind of put a little bit of CA glue, uh, some super glue in there to solidify them so that way they wouldn't pull. You know, if I did have to disconnect something, they wouldn't come out of the project box. So there's super glue uh, uh, at that joint there. So the 2.54 connectors, um, I soldered on uh, these wires um, and I uh, use shrink tubing um, to keep the solder joints from touching each other and basically the best way is to remove the pins if you do not remove the pins and you try to solder directly onto this connector you could heat up that plastic and then the pin will be real loose and may or may not make connection so your best scenario is to pull each pin out and solder it individually onto its corresponding colored wire that you need so I use this helping hands that I got off Amazon and um, the alligator clips allow me to, uh, uh, or they hold uh, the, the project for me if you're, if you're not familiar with the helping hands. Uh, so using needle nose pliers, I was able to pull out a pin from the uh, XH 2.54 millimeter connector, and then I just insert it into one of the alligator clips. The other alligator clip I would connect a wire to, uh, say the red wire, with just a, a little bit of uh, uh, copper showing. And then that allows me to have my hands free to solder the pin to the wire. Once I'm done uh, with all the soldering, then I can remove everything from the helping hands. Um, and insert it back into the connector and I'll show that in a little bit. So one thing you need to make sure is that that pin is in line with the wire that you're soldering to it. 
because there's not much room on the connector to have like crooked wires. Uh, so you take off the pin, use needle nose pliers, reinsert it where you got it from. I do one pin at a time so that I can verify the depth of the pin is in as far as it needs to go in relation to the other pins that are already there. <clears throat> Once you got that done, then everything should be in line. You can uh, uh, then shrink tube all the connections there so the solder's not touching each other. So here I'm showing I've got everything installed. All the XH connectors are super glued in place. I've got the wires soldered in and shrink wrapped. I've got them attached to the screws on the switch. So you use this switch uh, in correspondence with the screws, uh, with the column of screws that you've attached a connector to. Uh, by moving the switch back and forth, you'll be able to perform a continuity test. You'll want to do that by attaching a multimeter uh, using the continuity test on it uh, to each pin to make sure that there's no openings from the pin all the way to the screw. And uh, you also want to check the center screws as well, dependent on the position of the switch um, to make sure there's continuity in the switch itself uh, from the pin on, on the connector on the outside. Hopefully that makes sense to you. <clears throat> so you want to flip the switch back and forth, check the continuity. When everything is all good, uh, basically just close up your box. Uh, I went ahead and labeled everything. I colored my connector black for the main board so that I wouldn't get confused when I'm, you know, if I have to disconnect anything for some reason. And it, I colored it black with a marker uh, for the actual cable that goes to the main board. The other one is the Y axis stepper and this is the rotary attachment so here i am plugging everything in I've got the y or sorry the rotary attachment plugged in i'm plugging in the uh, um, y axis to the motherboard to the main board uh, and or that goes to the y axis connector on the main board and then the other one is the y stepper motor and once it's all said and done then the switch is ready to use Here's a switch in use. It's got a shape on the screen and I'm gonna hit frame. I have the switch in the normal position and my X and Y axis are operating as normal. Once I want to move over to the rotary, I don't have to disconnect any cables or anything. I just come back to light burn and I will enable the rotary. And then I will flip the switch and frame again without disconnecting any cables. Everything's working as it should. The X is traveling normal along the gantry of the machine and then the Y is being operated by the rotary. I did have to go through the settings. I'm gonna switch this back to uh, the normal position, but I did have to go through the rotary settings and change you know, my, chuck, my uh, rotary type to chuck I set it up to operate on the Y axis, and then I set my millimeters per rotation per what my chuck is supposed to be. Then I can select my object diameter. All right, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and have a great day.